is Amni. My name is Dominique Duvernay, aka Creole Lady Marmalade, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. So, today, as you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about mixed talk, mixed race relations, Creole, Latino, just things that have to do with being mixed in the Americas generally. But um, today, I want to talk about the difference between biracial multi-generationally mixed and light-skinned african-american because in america we tend to divide our light-skinned people up into two groups you have biracials and you have light-skinned black and that's not really fitting because not all light-skinned blacks are 100 percent black i mean of course obviously we know that virtually no american is 100 percent sub-saharan african but you know what i mean by 100 percent black in the American sense of the term, predominantly of African ancestry, like three quarters or more. But with that said, so yes, we typically divide our light-skinned people into those two groups, but there is a third group, and this is the group that I fit into that is starting to make a little bit of noise and starting to want to be seen and heard, and that's good, and I'm trying to help with that. Um, and that is multi-generationally mixed people, AKA MGMs. So we are also mixed. We are oftentimes as mixed as biracial people. And when I talk about mixed people, biracials, MGMs, just mixed in general, I'm sticking to a black white mix just for the sake of ease. Cause it's easier for me to kind of get my points across if I just kind of stick to this one little group. But obviously we all know that biracials and mixed people come in all different races and ethnicities, not just black and white, but for the sake of ease, and because we're talking about within the African-American spectrum in America, we're just going to stick to black, white for this video. But yes, so, I mean, the easiest one to describe, obviously, is biracials. This is a person who has one parent that is one race, one parent that is another race. Easy peasy. So yes, biracial, they don't even have to be light-skinned. Biracial people run the spectrum. They can look purely white, they can look purely black, but they most often look somewhere in the middle, somewhere ambiguous or mixed, your quintessential mixed look, but they can run the gamut. Whereas when we go to light-skinned blacks, obviously they have to be light-skinned <laughs> or they wouldn't be light-skinned blacks. Some of them are mistaken for being biracial or mixed because they have light skin but they are of no recent mixing. A light-skinned black person has two black parents. They don't have a parent that's another race. They don't have a grandparent that's another race. Even though they're getting this random European gene from way back when, they are often no more mixed than the average African-American is. They just so happen to get a gene that causes them to have lighter skin, but they're not particularly mixed. So that's biracials, that's light-skinned blacks. Then you have what is a little more difficult to explain, your multi-generationally mixed people, and this is the group that I fall into. We are often phenotypically and genetically more similar to biracials. Although, as I said before, it runs the gamut. You know, biracials, mixed people, we can look a ton of different ways, but we're going with the standard here. So the standard mixed type look, a, a true MGM who has two MGM parents, we are often far more genetically and phenotypically the same as biracial people. So yeah, I'm multi-generationally mixed. I am Creole and a little bit Latina. I have a Creole father and a Creole and Nicaraguan mother. So now I'm gonna use my handy dandy chart to give you guys a visual on the similarities and differences between biracial people and multi-generationally mixed people. As you can see, both groups have the same start and end point. Both groups start with a black person and a white person mixing, and both groups end with a mixed or gray person, according to my chart. Um, the only difference is with biracials, this is a direct thing that occurred. A black person made a child with a white person, and they made a mixed person. Whereas with multi-generationally mixed people, as you see at the top of my chart, there are two scenarios where a black and white person procreated to make a mixed or mulatto child. So a lot of MGMs, not all, but a whole lot of MGMs are Louisiana Creoles, Latinos, and there's also various other MGM groups. So some MGMs can be people like Zoe Kravitz or Aisha Curry, who are the product of two directly biracial parents. So they would be second generation biracial, 
which also falls under multi-generationally mixed. And some MGMs like Louisiana Creoles and Latinos, our mixture started during colonial times. So when that French or Spaniard or Portuguese slave owner had an encounter, whether it be through rape or relationship, whatever the case was, had an encounter with the indigenous or African slaves, well, because we're talking about black, white here, we're going to stick to African. They would have an encounter with the African slave. They would make a mulatto baby. And because in these territories, in Louisiana and Latin America, this happened a lot, that mulatto baby then had lots of other mulatto babies to grow up and procreate with. So what would happen is they would grow up, they would have a child with another mulatto person, and that child would then be mulatto because back then they understood that two mulatto people made a mulatto baby. So literally on paperwork, on my family's old census records, you will see how those two mulatto people created a mulatto baby, aka a gray baby, according to my chart. And as you can see, as you go down my chart, this continued to happen. So mulattoes continue to procreate with one another and you have it to where it is down to present day now and you have people like me various louisiana creoles latinos and other mgms it's not just creoles and latinos but there are various mgms that fall under this this situation so we know that biracial americans are slightly more than half european and slightly less than half uh, sub-saharan african because their black parent also has a slight european admixture Whereas an MGM's percentage might vary more widely because our mixing happened over the course of so many generations that it's not likely that every single person in the tree were 50-50 mulattoes that procreated with each other. You do have instances within the tree where a few people might have procreated with monoracially black people or monoracially white people or whatever other races. You do have instances throughout the course of so many generations where they did procreate with people who weren't exactly 50-50 mulatto. So you have these things that will kind of skew our percentages. Some of us might be a good bit over half sub-Saharan African. And some of us might be a good bit below it if we had a lot more white mixing in our family. So our percentages vary more widely than a first-generation biracial person. But still, even if an MGM is a good bit more than half sub-Saharan African, they're still going to be less than three-quarters sub-Saharan African. Otherwise, they wouldn't be an MGM. But yeah, this is just to show you that an MGM and a biracial person are extremely similar. The mixing was just gone about differently. One just takes the scenic route to end up at the same destination. And side note, I always have to give this disclaimer because I don't want to hear nobody's mouth. Creole does not always automatically denote mixed ancestry. There are non-mixed, fully black Creoles, but Creole, just as with the Latinos, you have non-mixed Latinos, you have non-mixed Creoles, but in the case of me and in the case of a, lot of, of a lot of people, and when people talk about the terms Louisiana Creole and Latinos, we're often talking about people of mixed ancestry. But this is, I'm just throwing out the acknowledgement that I do realize that there are non-mixed Creoles. Moving along. So for me, and for people like me, they may or may not be Creole, they might just come from a long line of mixing multi-generationally mixed people we come from long lines of mixing typically on both sides of our families we come from a mixed mom and a mixed dad you have people like zoe kravitz she is a product of two mixed parents two biracial parents so her dad half black half white her mom half black half white so she is still half black half white she's still just like a biracial person has two black grandparents and two white grandparents the only difference is a first generation biracial will have their two white grandparents on one side and their two black grandparents on the other side someone like zoe has a black grandparent and a white grandparent on one side and also a black grandparent and a white grandparent on the other side so this is a person who has two black parents and she's just a hundred percent black <laughs> because she has two black parents and we're just going to ignore the fact that she also has two white grandparents and literally probably a little bit more than half of her lineage that is European. But she's just an easy example of to start trying to explain multi-generationally mixed. She is the product of two biracial people and she is therefore still biracial. She didn't magically turn 100% black for some reason. Her two white grandparents didn't poof, magically disappear. She is half black, half white. So in America, the, the rule tends to be if you have two parents of two different races, you're biracial. If both your parents are black, you're black. But 
you have people who have two black parents but they are still very mixed so that's why i say this whole two black parent thing that's that's not that's not specific enough that's too blanket of a scenario it's not representative enough of enough people because for instance i have uh what is it? my grandpa's cousin who on her ancestry results she is 73 percent european if you see her she looks pure white she is 73 percent european but she is black because she has two black parents now if she's 73 percent european and both her parents have black in them they're both roughly a quarter black, give or take, 25, 30% black. So you have someone who has two parents that are basically about a quarter black, just being referred to as black, even though she doesn't look black, and her parents are barely even black. So of course, you know, that's an old school scenario where, yeah, one drop rule prevailed, and you know, you could have had two parents that were 10% black and you'd probably still be black. But in today's society, that makes absolutely no sense. And this is why I think the category of multi-generationally mixed needs to be a thing. Because things like that make no sense. So that's why the whole two black parent thing doesn't make sense if those two parents aren't monoracially black. Now, if we compare a multi-generationally mixed person to a non-mixed African-American, we can see that... Yes, as many love to say, we all got a little mixture down the line. We all mixed with a little something. Yeah, they are mixed with a little something. So I started my chart at the point at which a slave master might have raped a slave and created a, a mulatto baby. I started it there. So you see, you'll have, you know, that, that one black white mix and they made that mulatto baby. But in the majority of instances, that mulatto baby would have grown up to procreate with a monoracially black person. So when that happened, that, as you can see on my chart, the gray plus the black equals dark gray. You now have a child who is predominantly black, but is still a quarter white. But even then, that quarter white child would have likely, in most instances, procreated with another monoracially black person. And then at that point, that child is, they're like one eighth white. They're black at that point. So yeah, there was some mixing. And this happened more than once. African-Americans have more than one mulatto at the top of their tree somewhere. But I can only illustrate one branch of someone's family tree. Of course, people have a mom's side and a dad's side and both their parents have both their parents' side. So you have so many branches to a family tree where yes, this occurred more than once. But like I say, it is so far down the line on that family tree and also it didn't happen frequently these are distant sporadic mixings sprinkled into a predominantly black scenario throughout the distant points in their family tree thus creating a predominantly black lineage on average again outliers exist exceptions exist but we're speaking on average the other set of people that I do consider to be MGM are people who have one non-black grandparent, like Rihanna. Rihanna has a, a black mom, as far as I know, and a biracial dad. To me, people like this are still mixed. A grandparent is a close relative. Your grandparent is a part of your life. People are generally culturally affected by a grandparent. They will typically grow up with their grandparents' customs. And if one of their parents is biracial, let's say your, your parent is half Chinese and half black, your biracial parent might speak Chinese. You might grow up being babysat by your Chinese grandma. You might be very culturally impacted by that. So even though you might have three other black grandparents and one non-black one, that is still a close enough relation to affect your life. And even genetically, take someone who has a parent that's 93% Sub-Saharan African, which is on the high side. But let's say they're 93% black and their biracial parent is 45% Sub-Saharan African. That person will likely be somewhere around 69% Sub-Saharan African. And that is still less than three quarters black. That is still less than the average African American. And not only that, but they do have a close non-black relative. So a grandparent is, is really close. So I consider people with a non-black grandparent to be mixed or to be MGM. So the area where the, the waters get a little muddied when talking about being multi-generationally mixed are when it comes to people like Beyonce or Steph Curry. So both Beyonce and Steph Curry have African-American fathers. I have heard through the grapevine that Steph Curry's father is mixed or whatever, but that hasn't been confirmed. We're gonna go with him being fully African-American. So both of them have African-American fathers and highly mixed mothers. Beyonce's mom is Louisiana Creole like me. Uh, Steph Curry's mom, I heard she's Creole. I heard she's 
uh, Haitian mixed, I heard, I don't know, but whatever the case, she has some type of either Louisiana Creole, Haitian Creole, some type of Creole mixed something or another. But be that as it may, they are both highly mixed. So I feel like these people that have true MGM parents and an African-American parent, they are still in that mixed spectrum. I mean, it's up to them if they feel like, if, I think phenotype kind of comes into play on if you feel like you identify more with black or if you feel like you identify with your mom's mixed heritage and you too having some of her mixed heritage. To me, the difference is a black person will not have more than one biracial grandparent. And that is, that's super rare. That doesn't happen often either um, in the realm of, we started talking about light-skinned black people, but any black American, that is very rare to have a biracial grandparent. But even then, I'll, I'll give them that. I'll, I'll say they could have a biracial grandparent. They will not have more than one mixed 50% European grandparent and they don't have a, a non-black parent or grandparent. So the non-recent mixing plus the small genetic admixture that, you know, just about every African-American has is the reason why they're not considered to be mixed. Whereas an MGM who may also not have a recent non-black relative, we also don't have a recent fully black relative. And that's that's a big difference right there. A non-mixed light-skinned black person has two monoracially black parents, at least three monoracially black grandparents. In MGM, we do not have monoracially black parents. We do not really have monoracially black grandparents, you know, one at most maybe. And MGM is gonna have at least three fully super mixed, like three also MGM biracial, some type of mixed grandparents. And that is because an MGM is often the product of two mixed parents. So the only way I can have two mixed parents is if both my parents are either biracial or they are also the product of mixed parents. Or at least, you know, one of them might have two mixed parents, the other one might have a mixed parent and a black parent. But you're gonna have a total of three mixed grandparents because someone like me who is just 100% MGM on both sides, all four of my grandparents are mixed. But when you get to talking about these people like Steph Curry and Beyonce, who fall in the middle of MGM and light-skinned black, who do have a monoracially black parent, they all have two highly mixed grandparents. And that is, I think, signature of someone who is half <laughs> MGM. That's a category I'm not gonna argue super hard for. I think it's a little bit more up in the air whether they truly are mixed or black. To me, I feel like they could do either or. But for people like me who do stem from two fully mixed parents, mixed grandparents, just, you know, a lot of Latinos who just been mixed, mixed, mixed down the line, it does not make genetic nor biological sense that someone who is that heavily mixed, who is likely 60, 50, 40% African only identify with being black American. Because when, when you get to those high numbers of European ancestry, now you have people literally ignoring and disowning an entire half of their ancestry. And for the multi-generationally mixed people like me, it's not even about identifying with being European. That's not even it. It's the fact that when you've been mixing for so long, you start to develop your own, own racial identity outside of the monoracial things that your family originally started with. We haven't been monoracially black nor white for a very long time. So we start to, that's why Latinos have such strong Latino pride. And they, they, they identify, even though we know Latinos are not a race, they call themselves La Raza, Viva La Raza. They see themselves as a race because they've been this mix for so long that it starts to feel like it's its own race. And that's why, even though we know it's not a race, we still on paperwork, we'll sort of, categorize it as a race even though we're saying hispanic ethnicity latino ethnicity we refer to latinos as a separate group they're racially they're basically biracial or mixed they're based they're multi-generationally mixed but we would not refer to a puerto rican as oh she's mixed with black and white and, and native american we wouldn't say that we'd say she's puerto rican we wouldn't point to this mexican and be like oh he's mixed with the white and native american no you would call him mexican you would call them latino and that's what we need here in America. We need an equivalent to Latino. And we have Creole. For those of us who are Louisiana Creoles, we have that. But y'all need to start acknowledging it for one and letting it be a thing. 
and uh, but Creole doesn't really Creole I guess though so yeah it does work because it's like Latino there are non-black Latinos but still when you say Latino that is still opening up your mind to the fact that these people are likely racially mixed just like with Creole if I say I'm Creole you know that there's some sort of French infused whether it be culturally or racially just saying creole gives you the idea that i am either culturally or racially mixed and just looking at me you'll know that i'm racially mixed and i think mgms in america in general need that sort of identity there needs to be some sort of mgm title for people who fit under that and feel like that suits their skin more not that we're not down to fight with African Americans, not that we don't care about what's happening to them, not that we aren't also affected by some of what happens to them because we are at the end of the day still of African American heritage, but it is a very different experience.